Hello and welcome to our 37th episode where we seek to document the various games and offerings from Nintendo through the years. Today we cast an inquisitive eye over the game and watch, from the multi-screen series called Lifeboat. But before we dive into this little known treasure I'd like to answer our last episode's photo quiz question we here on our channel like to call what in the world? Did you know what this was from the tiny segment of the photograph? It was the game and watch tribute called The Legend of Zelda released in November back in 2021. I hope you guessed this correctly. Following the great game and watch tribute of the Super Mario Bros. in 2020, Nintendo released a similar themed version to commemorate the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. Returning our focus back to today's star of our show, the game and watch lifeboat was issued to the public on October 25th in 1983, where it's estimated that it sold upwards of 500,000 copies. The game and watch lifeboat was given the production code of TC58. Lifeboat is the 36th game and watch issued by Nintendo. It's also the 8th multi-screen game they produced. However, it's also the third and final book style, or side-by-side -side screen setup in the multi-screen series ever made. This likely reflects the popularity, or lack of popularity attributed to this styling. The gameplay focuses on a fire that breaks out on a massive luxury passenger liner. The handheld case is predominantly orange in color, with a white interior paneling surrounding the two screens. Sadly my example has oxidized over the decades, and those interior panels are now an off-white, or dirty cream color. The screens have two brightly colored underlaid foils that Nintendo used to offer an illusion of color to the screens that beautifully complement the LCD screens with their drab black gray display limitations. As the player your mission, should you choose to accept it is to try and rescue the passengers abandoning ship by placing a lifeboat below them to climb into. The lifeboat can hold up to four people. So you need to offload passengers all the time by pulling the lifeboat towards the shore so the passengers can disembark and get off. As with the vast majority of previous game and watches, the system has a two game playing mode option. The first being game mode A, with this offering the easiest challenge level, and the other being game mode B. Game mode B is by far more difficult as it only uses a single lifeboat instead of the two lifeboats available in game mode A. The lifeboat in Game Mode B can be pulled back and forwards between the two screens. Game Mode B is therefore only for professional lifesavers and players with quick reflexes. A discrepancy on the actual release date for this handheld occurred when it was referenced, and misreferenced in a later game and watch gallery. So what is the actual release date? In the museum part of Nintendo's Game and Watch Gallery 2 for the Game Boy it says 25th of November 1983, we believe this to be erroneous. However later on in Game & Watch Gallery 3 it says 25th of October 1983, which most collectors agree upon. What's your thoughts on this? Do you believe it was October or November of 1983 that this game was released? Let me know in the comments section below. The highest possible score for Lifeboat is 999. When the score reaches 300 all misses are erased, and as a bonus if there are no misses, or lost lives to restore all subsequent scores are doubled until you get another miss. This is called chance time. As a fast-paced game you're going to need to keep moving, as there is always something to do. A simple tip might be to try to keep the lifeboat as empty as possible, as you never know when you need the space, as passengers can often search. The scoring is quite simple, you get 1 point for every passenger that gets in the lifeboat and also 1 point for every passenger that arrives safely on the shore. As a side issue, you should be aware that if a passenger arrives on shore at the same time a miss, or lost life occurs then no points will be scored for that passenger. The lost life is given when a passenger misses the lifeboat, he falls into the water and gets eaten by a shark. This is then awarded by one miss, or one lost life. The same happens if the passenger tries to jump into a full lifeboat, which only has a maximum of four people. When the game registers three lost lives, shown by three unhappy passengers in the upper right corner of the right screen, the game is over. If you hold in the game A or game B buttons the highest previous score will be displayed on the screen, your objective is to beat that score. If the unit is left unattended after the game is over, the time display will appear in about 4 minutes. The unit has a wonderful built-in alarm that uses a crew member with a bucket of water attempting to extinguish the fire. A game is not interrupted even if the time button or other game buttons are depressed during game playing. Pressing ACL switch or removing the batteries erases any previously held high score from memory. Here we see an example of how a brand new game might have looked, alongside a retail shipper designed to hold 10 units. 
Clearly very few complete new old stock examples exist through the decades that have passed since these were offered for sale, and if you're lucky enough to find an example today, they will attract an enormous sum of money to purchase. And speaking about selling the brand new product back in the day, much later after the game and watch's initial launch had fizzled out, Nintendo produced a bargain basement version on the cheap to shift residual stock on a blister carded package format. These also have a zealous following of collectors in the modern world. And then there's our international collectors, who are equally fanatical on seeking out their own regional examples, like CGL in the United Kingdom or the pocket size variants from North America, as well as many other regional distributors. And that just about wraps up our quick look at the game and watch lifeboat. I sincerely hope you found the facts and tidbits interesting. This brings us to today's photo quiz question we like to call what in the world? Do you know what this mystery Nintendo item might be? And please be as detailed as you can be if you let me know your guess in the comments section below. If it's got you stumped, then please tune into next week's episode and see the grand unveiling. Well, thanks everyone for stopping by and watching, let me know what you like, what you'd like to see more of and any other advice. Please smack that like button, better still subscribe and activate the alarm function to be informed whenever we upload new content and as we start to roll out the prizes for competitions. See you all soon.